basically as i mentioned that this is something that has not to be discussed uh in the card you need to ask the patient name when you are preparing the card there is no name mentioned in the card there is no name mentioned in the card you have to you have to basically confirm this name of the patient during the session of the card right clear to you yeah you ha it's in something as per the questions i don't understand what happened today okay as per the question that has been asked it is important for you to understand that you know like uh, it's your job to paraphrase use your original words layman language do not use the word that has been written in the case notes so use your original words right use the original words anyhow that is the uh, criteria that we can say uh what i can say is your uh, clinical communication skills if you want to okay so the second thing is the linguistic skills now in linguistic skills we have to see the first and foremost is the uh, your ability to speak at length without hesitation just a okay so basically now we can move on toward the fluency part like the fluency mean you have an ability to speak at length without hesitation and with natural pauses right the fluency mean it's a natural flow of speech you should be able to speak at length without hesitation and with natural pauses then we can see that few hesitation like you should not doing like ahs and ums in the card we have to avoid it so in simple language a person who has an ability that he would be able to speak clearly without hesitation and with proper natural flow of speech right natural flow of speech mean the way you speak your la native language a person is uh, you know like labeled to be as a fluent person number one number second thing is before you can start working on any of the area of your speaking you should start working on your fluency for by by speaking english language as much as you can in your daily life because this is the first you can say upfront the upfront you know investment you have to do part of the capital this is upfront that will bring the, the, the that is the first challenge for you to you know like start speaking if you are a fluent person obviously there might be a lot of things that would be covered under the umbrella of fluency right anyhow the third second criteria in the linguistic is the appropriateness is again not a point can be defined in a single line it's a blanket criteria that do cover a lot of things first of all your tone you know like tone will be applicable to the you know like to every part of the card maybe start maybe assurance maybe empathy maybe explanation your tone should be appropriate you have to adjust your volume of tone uh, your pitch of tone as per the required requirement of the card how would you start a card if it's a good news it's a bad news if you have to greet with high tone if you have to greet with low tone you know it's important for you to understand number one number second thing is uh, the start of the card should be appropriate if you are starting the card as you're seeing the patient for first time and you're seeing the card uh, starting the card if you are start seeing the patient for second time you will be penalized for false start similarly if there is a setting let's say i'm going to give example if you are conducting a help based assessment and you need to start card differently and you start in the card in a simple approach like after greeting how can i help you the candidate might be confused that how should i answer this question like how can i answer you that how can you help me you are the person who has to conduct the health assessment so your 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 start should be appropriate you must have an ability to start the card as per the appropriate formality okay so basically as you can see there that we have the uh, you should have the right tone right way to start use non medical term and you have to select those statement that should be appropriate with reference to start so this is something that you need to understand there is no concept of memorizing the statement you should not memorize anything you have to design your card as per the response of the card as per the statement that has been given to you now intelligibility is your tone management in simple word that where you should 
put a high tone and where you should put a low tone, right? Where you should put a high tone and where you should put a low tone is your tone management, which includes not only pronunciation, you would be able to pronounce certain things clearly. Your accent should be understandable that might not be missing the words. And uh, you should be able to put a stress on the right part of the word. Then we can see there, there might be a variety of grammar as somebody has asked this question about the grammatical response. So I'm gonna give you answer for that, that you must have the range of grammatical structure and it must be accurate and followed by the cohesive devices that has to be used. I'm sorry. Anyhow, so basically this is the card that you can see. There's a patient who's 10 month old baby boy who has come to see you and child is suffering from gastroenteritis. So you have to see, first of all, the first cue is that patient is anxious and secondly is playing on the floor happily. So we can start the card with normal greeting and with open-ended question. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not wrong if I'm talking to Mr. XYZ. You must be father to Michael, right? So what happened to you? I can see that you are quite concerned or else I just have gone through your file and I can understand that uh, we are quite concerned about your son hydration. Can you tell me own words what make you uh, concerned? The patient will ask, tell you something. You can go to open and close end question. Then explain in the layman language about a diagnosis. Show the patient nothing to be worried about. As your child is playing happily on the floor. Then he would ask you about the medication. Accordingly, you have to address. And lastly, discuss about the dietary intake. Do not add something from your knowledge. Do add something. Uh, what has been written in the card. Okay. Do not ask something from your knowledge. There is another card from the nursing side. I like to discuss that as well. Let's say. And now this is the card. We have the patient who is here from the home visit. And uh, he's a 98-year-old patient. And you are here to conduct the home care assessment, right? So we have to have a warm greeting because you are paying a home visit. And again, starting from the normal uh, open-ended question. Hello, Mark. How you have been? Uh, I've seen your file. I'm quite glad that, you know, you have shown your will to be in the nursing home for a period of some time when you are uh, the retirement home uh, for a period of two weeks as uh, your, your daughter is going abroad. So I will be here to conduct your uh, assessment, home care assessment, so that we can have the plan accordingly, right? So I really appreciate again your, uh, you can say, you know, like you, you your attitude that you have given liberty to your children so that they can enjoy. Okay, so before we can start this assessment, if you have any concern reservation, please feel free to ask me. He will ask you about the flexibility. You have to assure him. Then we have to tell the patient, just feel like home. We respect all the wishes. Then we can start about sleep, habit, meals, etc. We can ask the patient, right? And then you have to ask the patient that why you are taking this history. Lastly, we have to ask the patient about the medication regime, which is taking a medication. And then you have to summarize the card. So these are two scenarios we discuss. If you like to ask any questions. I can start now, please. Okay. Uh, hello, Mr. XYZ. If I'm not wrong, you must be son of Harry Smith. I can understand from the file of yours that your father had a fall. But can you tell me your own words, like how he had fallen, let's say. Then the patient will give you some information at length. You have to show empathy. Oh, Mark, it's totally understandable that being a son, it would be quite distressful for you to see your father in pain. But in order to better understand his condition, i like to ask some question. Uh, if you don't mind, can I, please? Then you can ask that when he had fallen. First was open-ended question. You had shown empathy. You have shown active listening skills. Then you can go for the closed-ended question. Let's say when he had fallen. When is also a range of grammar. Is there any history of bruising that you start, you're starting from is? Okay. So uh, you're saying that you, you had given, uh, we can say parent... <laughs> So by by the by the consent of your daughter, sorry, your sister. So do you mind if, if I can ask you like a personal question? Is your sister a healthy professional? Okay, so you're saying that she's not a healthy professional. It was just a self-prescription uh, that has been done, okay? You know what is. So will it be possible yes, for you, Harry, you know, like if you can bring your son in here because before we can give him Panadin Ford or any other medication, we have to see the patient here. Uh, I'm afraid that it would be possible for me to write an medication 
without seeing the Harry. So will it be possible? The patient will give you tough time over here. Like, it's not possible. He's in pain and blah and blah. So you have to explain it. Mr. Mark, it's relatable. Your concern, your agony is totally understandable and relatable. I'm going to respect that. However, considering your father's history as I am his general practitioner, I know that he's having a regular heartbeat. And in order to regulate them, he's taking... Uh, yeah, yes, sir. I said atrial fibrillation uh, instead of... Sir, I said atrial fibrillation, which is a medical term. And you contraindicated that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We have to use yeah. the uh, abnormal heartbeat. And try not to use yes. the contraindication. We can just use that. Uh, you know, like we cannot give a medicines. You know, like there are certain group of medicine cannot be given in parallel. As I'm afraid that they can affect, uh, you can say, interact with each other, having a negative effect. Then you have to say that as, you know, like being a doctor, it's quite important for me to see the doctor's eye as Harry's well-being is the most important concern for me. That's why, you know, I would appreciate if you can discuss the thing with Harry and we can arrange a home visit, right? Like that. Yeah. Feedback on that. I guess I appreciate that uh, you tried to uh, complete the card in time, but uh, there were some alien word, like linguistically you are using, not word in English, but you have used some Urdu word as well. Try to control on them as well. Started yes, from sir. the fact that you had used the open-ended question, followed by a closed-ended question, but be more specific in range of grammar when you are asking the closed-ended question, right? Be yes, sure talkative. So try to recapitulate what the patient was saying. And you have asked the patient uh, about his understanding. And you have, you know, like denied the request of the patient in a non-judgmental way, right? Uh, yes. Regarding the self-care techniques, you can use the, like this point, you can use the cohesive devices such as first of all, secondly, thirdly, and so on. It would be better at least yes, you can use it over here. Then we can also move, uh, use the sign posture changes. Okay, let's move on and discuss the sleep hygiene. Uh, then again, use further more, moreover to discuss this thing. Okay, so yes, the thing was fine because in a, this scenario, it's very important for you to understand the patient perspective, his knowledge, and refusal should be in a no judgmental way. Yes, sir. So that was fine. As you can see, that you are a specialized nurse and you have been assigned to discuss about the smoking cessation. So, in this type of scenario, first of all, start should be more appropriate. You can start the card. Hello, my name is Blan Blan. I'm one of the nurse in this hospital. I have been here to discuss about your uh, smoking cessation. I have been specific to that. I am really appreciate that you have given, shown your consent to discuss this thing. But still, uh, I would like to ask you, at a scale of 0 to 10, where would you mark your concern of smoking cessation uh, so that we can discuss accordingly, right? Okay. Then the patient will tell you something about like, I, yeah, I'm open for that, but I already have reduced the number. So before we can discuss further on, you know, as I can see your file that you have been suffering from blah, blah conditions. Do you have any idea that how smoking can trigger your health condition as you already have a lung related problem? Try not to use the medical words. Then you can see mm -hmm. that uh, you have to tell the patient, I really appreciate that, you know, like you have reduced the number of cigarette smoke from blah blah to blah blah uh, so have you used any 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 strategy for that patient will tell you that was self power wow that's great you know like you have used your self power you are a quite strong person so it means that you have a year you have a passion and you have ability that you can quit it completely so what do you think about that have you ever given a thought that i should be quitting smoking completely what is your understanding on that then patient will tell you about the stress management you have to assure it, like, don't worry, I'm going to share some method with you and uh, some some techniques that can release your stress, okay? And uh, we and my team will be with you so that it would be easy for you to, uh, you know, overcome with the pro problem of your smoking cessation. Alternative to stress, you can, it's open thing. You can discuss about maybe having some relaxed time at your work, yoga, exercise, spending good time with the family, hanging out with family and so on, right?